uh, frightening about it is that they know our own minds almost as well, if not better than we do. They know how to make. They know what makes us tick. That's I cannot fathom a more dangerous enemy. Yes, they know that we're upset and we want our rights back. So they come up with this scheme and say, "Hey, if you feel the way I do, and I'm sure that you would agree." And yes, we can we can all agree that things are bad. See, there's the pitch right there. There's the pitch. Why? What, where's the pitch? I'll show you. If you agree to one thing, you're more likely to agree with the other things that they have to say. And the other things they have to say is what they're actually pitching you. But if you are in accord with them, then you're on that loop. Remember the infinity sign on its side? loop you around you agree buy my product you disagree they loop you around you agree buy my product they want you to do this stupid thing that has never worked the only thing that it's done the only thing that it's done is laid a waste and a clear pathway for another country to take over that's what these fake revolutions do it is the blueprint every single time. It's in the history books. It's online. Go look it up. Every time they install a fake revolution, the patsy comes in, the stability operations come in, and all of a sudden the IMF and the World Bank step in. And they fund the rehabilitation of that country. They pour billions of dollars into the infrastructure to build that country back up. Why? Because it's part of it. They figured out that they can get whatever they want. And they'll use you to get it. And it's brilliant because how would you say no? Is anyone going to say no to a constitutional republic here in the United States? No. Uh, actually, currently they have kind of... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> How about, how, about, how about Barack Obama? How about the entire Congress? How, how about every you, you single senator? There. How about every single senator? How about every single governor? How about every single freaking person who attends public education and doesn't think that it's BS? You got a real good point there. I had to qualify. My I rest my case. Yeah, I rest right. my case. You're absolutely right. On the lower end, the new middle class and lower which is all of us listening, and you and me talking. We all want our rights back. The funny thing is we never lost them. That's the brilliance. The brilliance is we never lost them, folks. Guess what? You always had the right to hang up the phone. You always had the right to hang up the phone. And what do I mean by that? What I mean when I say you've always had the right to hang up the phone, it means you always had the right not to participate. You always had the right to say, wait a minute, I'm emotional about this, and I don't feel comfortable. Let me, let me think about it. Let me sleep on it. Let me talk to my wife. Let me talk to my friends. It's okay to get advice. It's okay to think because, folks, we have this idea, and I mentioned this earlier, and I'm, so I'm going to bring it back up. We have this idea the consequences are bad. Consequences are not bad. In fact, Bill Gates at the World Economic Forum was setting up situations where he would have multiple consequences. Why? Because there's no such thing as bad press. That's what the Wolf of Wall Street learned. There's no such thing as bad press. That's what Bill Gates has learned. It was all over, all media. And I hate to break it to you guys, but the mainstream reported on it as well. When 47,000 children died in Pakistan. Absolutely. It's a big deal. Teflon Bill Gates, he's still walking around with his hands in his pocket, whistling down the street. Nobody's pointing a finger. There's no indictment. Never going to be. He can get away with it. You and I are disenfranchised. We're looking for an, an answer. We're looking for a solution. And we're at the point now where we'll take anything. We don't have a very high opinion of ourselves as a group. We have very, very low self-esteem. We accept very, very little. And we are simply begging for the little bit that we have. Please don't take it away. 
If they still have their home, please don't take my home away. If they still have their job, I hate my job. Please just don't take it away. I, I have a family to support. I got to have this job. When we're in that state, we don't realize that we're protesting for things that we own. We have. We never lost. Because we always had the right to hang up the phone. We always had the choice not to participate. If you don't like GMO, don't buy it. Period. If you buy it, then you don't have a problem with it. You can make any excuse that you want for why you eat it. But the fact of the matter is, if you're doing something that you know is wrong and you're doing it anyway, you're okay with it. You have accepted that that is part of a, uh, that's maybe one of lesser evils that you've told yourself. You know, internet trolls are kind of funny because they are rebels. And sometimes they do really good things. I've seen people come into common threads who are called, called trolls and, and uh, not that they don't fit that bill. But I've seen some people come into common threads and point out really good, really logical thought process in such a short amount of, of words and then get completely jumped on by everyone else in the thread. And it's kind of funny. Because when someone makes sense, even if they're a troll, then everyone else turns around and facilitates the other part of that conversation. See, if you're having a conversation with someone and they're complaining about something and you're telling them, oh, don't worry about it, it'll be okay. And then you stop and think about what they're saying and you start to feel how they feel. Well, yeah, maybe what just happened to us isn't okay. And so you start to complain about it. They'll, tr they'll pick up the other role, the one you left behind. They'll start telling you it's okay. Don't worry about it. And we see this going on back and forth in these common threads because everyone is expounding on their belief. Their belief is based on how they feel about themselves. And since we all have this problem of low self-esteem, we don't think very highly of ourselves. We've accepted less than we know is acceptable to us individually. We've accepted a smaller car or a smaller home or uh, no vacation or uh, buying at secondhand store. We tell people that we do it because we uh, don't believe in planned obsolescence, but we really do it because we're broke. So we've accepted less than what we know that we're worth. And at this point, we just want what little we have. Now here comes the savior. Now here comes the group. Now here comes the wave of people who have found the answer. And you can join their group and you too can get all the spoils of what they're about to do. Except they're only discussing the incident. It's just like on the stock market. They're only going to discuss what happened today. The markets went up, the markets fell. The markets went up, the markets fell. It started up here, it ended down here. It started down here, it ended up here. They're only going to talk about an isolated incident because that's the product. You don't have to buy the constitutional republic. That's the third-party idea in the cloud that's sitting up above everyone that no one can attain. But they, it's out there. You know that it's there because people talk about it. And so what you're buying is participation in the revolution. And what comes at the day after the revolution, the stability operations. You could argue that what we're seeing with our domestic police forces is preparation for stability operations the day after the revolution. How many people are going to get killed? You know, these fake revolutions started out peaceful. In Serbia in the 1990s, it was peaceful, nonviolent resistance. Nobody died. Look at the Ukraine. Hundreds of people have died. They're getting a lot more violent. People say, well, it's because everybody's sick of it. I've got a friend who likes to use this analogy. She says, you know, if you poke someone in the chest and keep poking them and poking them and poking them, eventually they're going to grab you by the finger and demand that you stop. I said, absolutely, because if somebody's touching a part of you that they know is sensitive and they keep poking at it and poking at it and poking at it, they're going to get you to follow whatever it is that they're saying and that how they 
flip that around? Because you would think that that person would walk away. You'd think that that person would get away from the guy poking him in the chest all the time. Eventually it hurts. You know, they're poking the same spot for the last 10 minutes. It's starting to wear on you. It really hurts in that center of your chest. But instead of walking away from that person and getting away from the poking, we instinctually get up in that person's face and fight back. Because our person who we are. We are now defending our right to exist. How dare you continue to poke me in the chest? Who do you think you are? That's why shock jocks make so much money and they're so popular and it will never end. Because they are able to do that on a daily basis to their audience. And their audience, who has such low self-esteem, instead of turning the radio off, because remember, you always had the right to hang up the phone. Instead of turning the radio off, they will listen. They will listen even harder. They'll go back and listen to recordings. They'll study their move, everything that they do, because it touches a deep part of them. And now that that celebrity, that person, that, that shock jock is now a part of them. And in order to get rid of the shock jock, they would have to get rid of a part of them. So now they're, they're, they've got a symbiotic relationship going on. That's a lifetime customer. It works. That's why politicians and uh, musicians and celebrities, they're not worried about being exposed or having a, a compromising photo released of them or a very public, very destructive divorce or any kind of scandal. There's no bad press. If people are still thinking, Miley Cyrus is making a lot of money off of what she's doing. And the reason why is because show a sign of weakness, it's part of the sales pitch. Now, some of the weaknesses that we've seen in our culture that come out are pure distractions. And we see this because they bring no effect to change. That is the defining factor of whether or not the information you have is good. Is it affecting change? Change that benefits you. Not just change arbitrarily, okay? Not like the change that Obama said when he was speaking about trying, you know, trying to get, uh, become a president. And he's telling everyone that change, we need change in America. That's another, an idea whose time has come. You finish the sentence for him. And so now he becomes whatever you project onto him. That's what the fake revolutions do too. It's the Delphi technique. But it's used in a way that you don't even realize you're doing it. You think that it's your idea. You agree with that. You're sitting around with your buddies telling your friends, hey, you know, we're going to have this revolution and, um, and everything that they talk about when I'm on, in the group on Facebook or, or when, I'm, when I'm following um, the, the founders of this revolution, when I follow them around on, on radio and, and I hear them speaking and everybody in the chat room is talking. We're all in unison. We're all in accord. Now we've got groupthink. That is extremely powerful. Why? It's the same thing that happened in the caveman movie that I was talking about earlier. Whatever that guy did to ensure that he became lunch for the lizard, everyone else is not going to do. So we're going to look to the best of our group. And whoever's in our group, we're going to look at the guy who's the most successful or the girl who's most successful. And we're going to emulate them. So we're not doing this of our own volition, even though we think we are, because this resonates deep within us. We write to our favorite radio host or our favorite uh, musician or our favorite uh, television broadcaster and we say, that thing you did, that thing you said, that music that you put out, it touched me in such a deep way. And I'm, such, I'm so grateful to you and I'm, I'm going to be a loyal listener and a loyal follower from now on. That person is under a spell. And that person is giving away their power. It's absolutely a very intelligent, it's a sign of intelligence. Let me, let me change what I'm about to say. It's a sign of intelligence that we listen to other people and we make up our own mind. But like I've been saying, it's also a sign of intelligence that we do not react to anything because it's not that dire. 
unless you're in a situation where someone's got a gun in your face and you know you've been taking karate and you know that if you just get that guy in the right position, you could drop kick him and turn that gun around on him just like you saw in the movies. Unless you're in one of those kind of situations, there's no need for theatrics. You can sit back. You can think about it. You can take a day or a week or a month. It'll be fine. When it comes to what's going on in the Ukraine, this is emotionally charged and there is no logic or reasoning happening at all. Because if there is any logic and reasoning happening, then it wouldn't be pulled off. And it wouldn't get to the extent that it is. And it wouldn't be threatening huge superpowers and wannabe superpowers. Russia has the means and they have untapped resources. And if they were to go ahead and develop their country, they would be unstoppable. The U.S. doesn't want that. And a lot of other countries don't want that. The EU doesn't want that either. They don't want a country that is not under their system to have that much power. So what are they doing? They're not going in and invading. (laughs) 